Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of WCCF Bytes. This is technology news with an accent. So AMD just had their GDC 2016 event recently and they unveiled two brand new upcoming microarchitectures for AMD Radeon. Uh, basically, Vega will be succeeding the Polaris architecture in 2017 and Navi will be, update, uh, will be uh, succeeding the Vega architecture in 2018. Uh, before we get into all of that, I think a basic overview is in order. Uh, AMD shifted to the star co constellation nomenclature system with Polaris. Before that, AMD was using locations as its primary naming scheme. But with Polaris, however, they, they shifted to st the star constellation system because uh, star constellation systems emit a lot of light or photons. And uh, since AMD primarily deals with pixels, this is something that really appealed to them. In fact, if you look at the tweets of their higher ups, uh, you will notice that they were actually teasing Polaris architecture before it was unveiled. In fact, they, they mentioned something like Polaris is 2.5 times brighter than when it was originally observed, referring to the star, of course. Uh, and they actually mentioned the 2.5 times limit, which is the same uh, amount of per performance per watt increase over the 28 nanometer baseline that uh, AMD has demoed recently in their GDC 2016 event. So long story short, Polaris is 2.5 times uh, faster in performance per watt over the reference 28 nanometer generation that we have been enduring for so long. Uh, Vega will be succeeding Polaris and it will have high bandwidth memory, specifically HBM2. Now, this does indicate that Polaris might not have HBM. In fact, it might actually have GDDR5X since uh, AMD will be, f will be focusing on the value proposition of a graphic card a lot. Uh, they actually want to lower the, uh, the the VR minimum spec to a more affordable level. Currently, the VR minimum spec is $349 with the NVIDIA GTX 970 or an equivalent Radeon card. However, with the Polaris architecture, AMD uh, aims to lower this limit from $349 to something much more affordable so, uh, and therefore increasing the total uh, available market for VR systems. Uh, Vega 10 will be the real flagship. It is uh, it is actually a reincarnation of the Greenland GPU that we have heard for so long, and Greenland uh, will have HBM2. Vega uh, Vega 10 is the, is is the code name that we have seen uh, a lot of times before. In fact, we have actually posted quite a lot about. Uh, as far as Navi goes, we uh, there isn't really a lot of information except that it will feature next generation memory and that it's a nomenclature that it's an architecture that's pretty far into the future uh, and I'm, I think it's 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 little more than just a name on a piece of paper right now. AMD will also be increasing focus on VR a lot uh, basically because of the total available market according to John Petty research you can only sell 7.5 million of anything related to VR. This is because this is the amount of GPUs capable of running the minimum VR spec out there right now. Uh, what AMD plans to do is that it wants to offer a value proposition and it wants to address multiple tiers of the market with its Polaris architecture. Uh, and what AMD is doing is it's synchronizing its strategies across DirectX 12, uh, which uh, because of its asynchronous compute, it has a certain advantage at. In fact, it's leading in all three benchmarks out there right now. Uh, and it hopes to maintain this lead over NVIDIA GPUs as far as async compute is concerned. So I think that about wraps up everything that AMD revealed in their uh, GDC 2016 event. Anything of importance uh, anyways. Uh, I hope you liked what you saw. If you want continuous technology updates, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button or don't hit it if you don't want to, whatever floats your boat. Thanks for watching again.